Hey guys, Ronan Will. Uh, I'm going to be back with another painting video. Uh, this time we are doing the units from Obi-Wan's uh, 212, or Obi-Wan's clone trooper unit number 212. Um, these guys have a slightly different setup and layout than the previous ones from the clone troopers from the 501st. Um, these guys are also a little less well known. Um, again, they their commander is better known, which is Cody. Um, he will be in an upcoming video. But for now, I figured we would do the base coats for the characters. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, I actually already have started, as you can see. I'm starting with a base coat of Matt White. Uh, and I'm just kind of covering the whole damn model. Uh, clone troopers are fairly easy in the sense that their majority of their outfit is white. <laughs> so I just end up, I'm doing a whole base coating just to ensure that it's as white as I can get it. The next part after this, uh, there was a little bit of a cut there to recover some, um, some footage, but this is then the Necromancer's Cloak, which is going into all the inner pockets of the arm, like the exposed parts of the armor, as well as the visor and his little, um, I don't even know what you would call them, breath mask pieces? Like, I, I don't know what you would really call it. Um, but any joints essentially are going to be hit with this just to fill in, make you see the, a little bit more than it's just white on white on white on white. Um, this part, I, I hit two little pockets on the back, which in retrospect, I think I should have stuck with these, with the um, Necromancer or, uh, cloak on it. I end up getting rid of it because I think I end up just repainting it white but in in truth I think it should have been that that softer uh, mesh material almost uh, so yeah like last time I the goal is to maybe talk more about the group the 501st or the in this case the 212 um, however, I'm, again, these guys aren't as, like, popular, um, so, in general, maybe we'll just go over some minor, I guess they're minor, uh, facts about clone troopers in general, uh, and, uh, I'm, I was, I literally had something I wanted to say, and I cannot think of what it was. It will come back to me later, I know it. So, um, each squadron, and you'll see this as we go with all the different squadrons right now, they only have, well, technically a third one just came out, um, which I have, I have, I just haven't painted yet. Um, but these are your standard clone troopers. Um, the weapons that Obi-Wan's units are carrying are more like the, I believe they're called the D-11 blasters. Um, they are longer, like, sniper-like sniper -like rifles where, where Anakin's had, like, the shorter ones. Um, in gameplay, it's not really that different. I think they have about the same range. So... It, it really doesn't make much of a difference between the two with that although they have different abilities and stuff in the game I have yet to play the game I literally got my core set about a couple of weeks ago when it first came out and I've been gluing and, mo and priming all the models getting ready for this set of videos um, because I've been dying to actually get these videos, uh, get back to doing some of these videos for you guys. Um, I'm now on the, the blaster itself is gunmetal. 
just like the final first. So, yeah. Um, so, some clone trooper facts. Let's see. They're from Kamino. Um, they were created by the Republic to try and help with the fact that they do not have a arm. They didn't have an army um, before this. Thanks to the Rusan reformations, the Republic actually disbanded their army and had no warships or whatever. And then when the CIS or the battle droid groups and all of them started separating, becoming the separatists, pretty creative name there. Um, they became, they needed an army quickly. And it turns out that they had been secretly building an army um, by the dark, dark, uh, dark Sidious and this whole conspiracy thing. Anyway, um, they're all based off of the template of uh, Django Fett. So this is uh, before we go any further. So this is the um, desert yellow. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, this is desert yellow. I'm using this as its as their um, coloring highlights. Uh, I'm, I'm basing the actual like spots I'm putting this on off of the card themselves. You can kind of set these up the way you would like. I'm trying to stay a little bit close to the card, at least with one of the models in each grouping. Obviously, if it's a hero, there's only one character with it. I'll probably just stick with as close to the original concept as possible. But, like, these guys, I don't mind having one that's basically just looking a one-for-one one as what's on the card art. And then try and just design one however I would like. Um, so... Again, it's it's kind of bad with the with base coding here. You can see how flat everything looks. Um, but just like the five hundred first, we will soon see that he gets a lot more detail as soon as we start adding the dark tone onto everything, or the strong tone in this case. So yeah. So where were we? Oh yeah. So. The clones were based off of the DNA of Django Fett by the Kamo, uh, Kaminoans, uh, which I did not realize. Their planet is basically outside of the Star Wars universe, just like um, you see at the end of Empire Strikes Back, like Luke and Leia standing on the medical ship and all that. So that was the strong tone. Um, and I'm just basically covering every square inch of this guy. Um, but there are several universes that are close enough to like the Star Wars galaxy that, or even outlying systems that are close enough to the Star Wars galaxy that you could technically visit them without leaving that galaxy. Um, and Kamino is one of those outermost planetoids or planets. Um, which is why it was like so secretive that uh, the clones were being built. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Camino clones, Django Fett. This is now a day later, um, which again, due to where I live, that's kind of average. Is I have to give it at least three to twelve hours. Um, I just end up some days I'll just leave it overnight uh, but I go back and I touch up all of the white with more white um, again it will be nice not having to uh, basically just have white on white on white once we start doing actual character colors characters with colors but um, I also just got the 
set for the clone commandos. Clone commandos? Arc trooper? No, clone, clone commanders. Um, I, I would love to get some arc trooper characters, but the main difference is like the, the clone commandos are heavier armor. Their armor seems to be a little bit more like bluish tinted, although that could just be all the concept art that I've seen with them. Um, but definitely thicker armor, more like jetpack type stuff. So they're, they're special forces where these guys are your common clone troopers, um, dime a dozen type deal where they're meant just, they're, I hate to say it, but they're expendable kind of like droids in this franchise. Um, I don't know too many of the uh, 212 other than Cody. Um, yeah, everybody else, like, they don't spend as much time in the Clone Wars series with them as they do with Rex and uh, the 501st. Which is funny because I feel like. I feel like. Obi Wan and Anakin tend to spend a lot of time together, but in the game, in the shows, but the five hundred first are primarily the ones that they show, not so much the two twelve. Um, which I don't know, I don't know if that's by choice or if it just happens to work out that way, or maybe there's characters that I'm remembering that are in the five hundred first that actually were in the two twelve. I could not tell you it's hard to really be able to remember characters names that that well if they're just like one or two episodes and since they all have the same voice kind of look the same and act the same it's very very hard to differentiate between them so so I do apologize, and I was meaning to apologize for this in the beginning. The last video, and even this one, is not going to have any like m music in the background um, due to time constraints. Uh, when I actually have the time to edit and like post that I'm not rushing, because that's basically what I'm doing, is rushing to try and get these ready for, for the next couple of days. Um, I will actually be able to sit and pick audio, pick music that I would like to have in the background. I'm, I feel like something like, not obviously not copywritten, but like futuristic sci-fi, just background music type stuff that can play either on loop or has a long enough play cycle. So what's funny is I thought that this video for the for these guys for the five uh, for the two twelve were actually longer than the five hundred first one. Um, it looks like actually the five hundred first had more going on than um, these guys. Although it could be that I'm getting back into get yeah, like actually painting the way I used to paint. So. We'll see. Uh, this is just, again, those highlights. And by using a small enough brush, I'm not removing any of that detailing that I added by dark toning it or strong toning it. I keep saying dark tone because that was my default back uh, when I first started painting. I would dark tone everything, um, which, I mean, I still kind of like the dark tone more than uh, some of the sh the other shaders but um, in this case I wanted something a little bit more dirty based so like it looks like they spent more time out in the Sun in the in the elements not so much just standing in the shadows type deal so So we're just adding a little bit more of the white there where we need it. 
to finish it off. Uh, again, I adjust the camera angle because at this point the battery had died and I really need to get long, better batteries. Um, that said, I have like this, you, you're watching it at double speed, but um, this only took me a little over an hour between the uh, initial face white and finishing this model. Um, but the, the lighting and everything kind of overheats the camera a lot easier than I was expecting it to. So it takes a lot longer uh, having to switch a battery and then try and reline up the image and all that fun stuff. So this one I was a little bit more cohesive. I started with the legs and worked my way up. Um, if you remember the 501st, I literally was arm, now leg, now back, now butt, now back to the arm, now to this leg, now this arm, now, you know, I was jumping around a lot. This one is not as much jumping and for the most part, I think it's a little bit more cohesive. So if I had an option to redo these guys, I might have painted them before gl fully gluing them together, um, which means I could have either dry fit them together or just painted everything individually and then glued it all together. Um, I usually have the model solid like this, but it, you'll see it with a lot of the other figures. It's just hard to paint in between those action poses where like you have these different layers of s skin, armor, blasters, all this stuff kind of overlapping with each other, which is fine for your initial paint, but then when you're trying to do these highlights, like this, um, it becomes way, way harder. Um, right here, again, I do apologize that I kind of wandered off camera. That was the other thing. I was doing this completely blind, so like the camera itself was not displaying any images for what I was working on. So I kind of had to just guess where the camera was and for the most part it stays on screen majority of the time so at this point I've just got one arm left and the head which if I was better about this I would have remembered is <laughs> is off camera um, this is just trying to hit some of those harder to get two spots there we go um, because underneath those arms is one of the hardest spots to hit up so but we're just doing touch-ups now back to that that super detailed head for the size of these models I was actually very surprised with how much detail they squeezed into like every little inch of this model um, super detailed headpiece, super detailed like plate mail, all of it. Um, as we get to like the named characters that have a lot more skin and like facial features and stuff, I like I'm impressed how much detail they could get in such a tiny, tiny model. Uh, my first set of models that I started painting which got me into this is the super dungeon series um in fact i feel like that's some of the first that's some of the videos from the first early painting set and they're actually fairly large like they they don't have they have a lot of detail but they're also based off of anime characters so they've got like that chibi art style which gives them massive massive eyes and heads which I absolutely love it means I'm able to add 
a lot of detail to the uh, to the eyes. So that was the um, desert yellow again, which I kind of made a mistake here. I painted over a lot of the desert yellow, so I'm trying to remember where some of this neck uh, this desert yellow was sitting. And I could look at the card, which is sitting literally like 30 inches to the left, up, upper left of me during this uh, paint job, but I don't. Instead, I just kind of guesstimate about where I had all the original lines. I can still see some of it when I was uh, doing this, but in truth, if, if you're going to do it like like how I did it, you may want to take your time, again, slow down and paint the areas a little bit more um, in your face so you could easily spot the sections. He has one of the most aggravating uh, stomach slash chest designs because of that big blaster. Um, it doesn't really go all the way up to his chest instead it just goes up through the like the stomach guard area um, this is where I kind of ended up doing more like a Cody design on his um, his helmet there I added a single line down the what is that a fin the fin in the middle of his head I guess this kind of sounds like Yondu um, and then I'm just, again, I'm adding this, the um, 2, 12, like, brownish yellow paint job to this guy to try and make him a little bit more unique. Which is ironic because I'm pretty sure I ended up in this, I haven't started on the black yet for him. Or touched up his uh, his gray. So this is the uh, not gray. Touched up his um, his blaster, which is what I'm doing now. Um, so if I had had a little bit more time, I would have not only added maybe another highlight tone for the blaster on the very top, like a um, silver, but after I painted all this gray, I would have actually gone in with a black or mixed some black into this this uh, necromancer cloak and made it even darker in some spots. Um, really, this is just me touching up a few small areas. Um, so I'm also kind of basing my painting of these guys the same as uh, I believe it was called Blue Table which was one of my first groups that I was having have, uh, I had been watching and had gotten a few models painted from them and they do like a scaling like how complicated you want your character and stuff so if you have a hero character like Anakin or one of those, you you go for like a higher quality paint job than something like these guys who are super generic. Like they're not as bad as like the battle droids who are literally just going to get a highlight tone once they're done. But um, yeah, these guys are kind of like low tier guys. So. That will do it for the 212 guys. Um, so this was the one we were painting, of course, and just like last time, the other one should pop in in three, two, one. There we go, there it is. Um, this guy actually, I kind of like his pose. He's kind of like running and gunning at the same time, but um, yeah, so you can see I even adjusted the paint job a little bit for his armor set versus the one we painted. Um, but yeah, that will do it. Till next time, guys. Ronan Will. Later. Bye.